Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Martin Bacoli, Jared Anderson, all weighed in, ready to go. And for me, a big red flag coming out of the way and for Martin Bacoli. And we'll come to that. This is a very hard fight to call. On one hand, you've got Jared Anderson, the rising American heavyweight, who seemingly needs a big fight, a big name to legitimize his contender status as one of the guys to really watch out for. And if he wins this one, people are going to say he deserves a title shot. People are going to say he is the real deal. But there's also a bit of a conversation, is this too much too soon? Jared Anderson is 24 years old. He's been brought up uh, by top rank in his prospect phase the right way. But in recent fights, some of the opposition has just tapered off a little bit or say the Riyad Murphy fight, for example, and Murphy didn't want to know. But I guess that's a credit to Jared Anderson because he is dangerous. He is a dynamic fighter. But there also have been out of the ring issues. You've had a couple of arrests in the past year or so, but also was he motivated for some of those fights? He was fighting regularly, but it wasn't necessarily guys we wanted to see, but that's what he was served. In this fight, hugely dangerous Martin Bacoli. You know, he's almost become a bit of a meme in terms of being in the Who Needs Him club, but also of the sparring stories. It's sort of spiraled out of control with people saying that he's a sparring champion of the world. But he gets an opportunity. Martin Bacoli, who was beaten by Michael Hunter in 2018, has been on a pretty good run. He's had some decent results. He uh, beat Tony Yoka in what was supposedly a 50-50 fight at the time, and he looked really good in that. And since Michael Hunter, I think Jared Anderson is the most dynamic fighter that Bacoli has fought. Yoka could have fit that bill, but as soon as he tasted the power, those heavy hands, both hands from Martin Bacoli, he didn't want to know. He was on his bike and staying out of the way. But the red flag for me in this one, uh, you had the way in... Um, Martin Bacoli, 284 pounds. And it's always a red flag for me when someone shows up to a weigh-in and they've got something covering their lower stomach. And Martin Bacoli did. So I was surprised when he stripped off the T-shirt and he has this message of this T-shirt tied around his uh, midriff. And for a lot of guys, when you see, they're, they're trying to hide their stomach. And, uh, you know, perhaps we should be questioning this because I looked at the weight and I said, 284? Really? I mean, Martin Bacoli's had four months to train for this and he's coming in at 284 pounds. He's six foot six. So, you know, he's a big man, but 284 is pretty heavy. You know, I think Martin Bacoli at his best probably should be around 260, 265, there or thereabouts. I think, you know, 284, that causes a little bit of a red flag to go off in my mind just for the fact that, you know, Jared Anderson, if he takes him deep, perhaps we will see something like the Michael Hunter fight where Bacoli was tiring a little bit down the stretch. And like I say, Anderson, the most dynamic opponent since um, Michael Hunter, I believe, you know, and I think arguably possibly better than Hunter. I think he's got a better re repertoire and possibly hits harder. And you have a case with um, Martin Bacoli. If he does start to tire and Anderson hasn't taken too much punishment, it's a close fight. He could take this fight over. This really is a fight where, you know, I've sort of considered this a, a hard one to call for many reasons, just because, you know, Martin Bacoli, He's a bit of an enigma. No one's been signing up to fight Martin Bacoli in recent years. There's been talk of potential fights. Him and his uh, trainer and coach, Billy Nelson, have been calling every man and his dog out, but it just hasn't happened. And now he has this opportunity and he shows up at 284 pounds. That seems like a mess step to me. It's not like he's got the most massive legs. He's carrying a lot of rubble around that midriff. And I don't think that's necessarily the best thing for him. If it's not this fight, it'll catch up with him at some point. But perhaps, you know, he's unable to shake that um, rubble at this point. I mean, the last time that he was, you know, under, what, 280 pounds or under 270 pounds, I should say, was the Kuzman fight in 2020. He was 251. You know, he was actually putting in a pretty good shift in the 260s, you know, for a number of years, but of late. It's, you know, 284 here, 299, 280 against Shevardutsky. Uh, that 299 was against Carlos Takam. 
275 for Yoka. <sighs> yeah, I just think that he's not doing himself any favours here. Sure, he's a big puncher with heavy hands, but if he's working and working hard in that fight, as he will be made to do by Jared Anderson, I think that is going to catch up with him at some point. And like I say, whenever someone's you know putting something around their stomach, it's not good. And um, maybe he's going to be muffin topping all over the the front of his shorts come fight night. Jared Anderson, meanwhile, you know he was actually a career high, but 252. That's by about a pound. He's been 251 in a couple of fights, but you have to say, you know, he's in pretty good shape. And this is probably in or around the optimal weight for Jared Anderson. You know, when he's coming into you know his prime here, that he's probably going to be somewhere between 245 and 255. You know, there or thereabouts. So I'm not concerned by his weight, but Bacoli. Yeah, I just think that's too much for him. 284 pounds, I think that's asking for trouble. But the thing is, though, you know, Jared Anderson, a little bit shaky in the Charles Martin fight, got clipped. And if Bacoli happens to put it on him, this could go down all, go downhill very quickly for Jared Anderson if uh, Bacoli catches up with him. So we've got questions, I think, about Anderson. You know, he's tapered off in terms of the development, in terms of the arc of looking impressive and as he's got up the, the levels. But is that because also he wasn't being fed some of the guys that he should have been, the fights that he wanted to keep motivated? He's out of, he's out of the ring issues, as I mentioned earlier, the arrests and that sort of thing. You know, he looks dialed in here. You know, during fight week, he's looked like a guy that wants to make a statement. And if this is, you know, the sort of danger that he needs, because I heard that potentially he could have picked Jermaine Franklin. I think that's a much more winnable fight for Anderson compared to Bacoli. So they really have gone with the danger here in terms of, you know, picking Bacoli. And as you can see, but you know, Bacoli's got the height. He's got the reach on Jared Anderson, but Anderson is a guy who's got somewhat decent defense, apart from pulling straight back sometimes, that could catch up with him, but he is very dynamic on the offensive end, and he could also do what some of troubled Martin Bacoli in 2018 about Michael Hunter getting in and out, and I'm sure that him and his uh, training setup have come up with a plan to combat um uh, Martin Bacoli but you know he's going to have to be careful because you know Bacoli he's a handful he's got dynamite in both of those hands and he's also a very good body puncher but so too Jared Anderson he works to the body well and I think with Bacoli there's going to be ample to go around and I think you know part of their strategy surely must be they've got to sort of soften him up to the body help chop the tree down and then if Bacoli is starting to feel it They'll bring it up a little bit more up top. But, you know, this is still a very hard fight to call because I could see Martin Bacoli catching Jared Anderson the first few rounds of the fight, first five rounds, that sort of stuff, and maybe stopping him. But at the same time, I could see Jared Anderson flirting with danger, uh, but still coming away with a result here, um, breaking Bacoli down, potentially even stopping him or getting a decision late. But, you know, it's a very hard fight to call when it's going to come back to the, is, was Jared Anderson ready? And it's either going to be with flying colors or it'll be too much too soon. There's almost no one between that result. And for Bacoli, he gets to prove if he belongs to be at the top table. We will see. I'm not thrilled about that 284 pound weight because I think that's a red flag. He's had months to train. They announced these fights back in April and you've got Bacoli turning up in 284 pounds with a t-shirt wrapped around his guts. Not good. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.